Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Nerd Cyclopedia. I'm going to have BS with me and the nerds. It's your host, T. Mitch, here. And uh, before we get going, give you guys a quick introduction of all our guys for all our new listeners out there. Uh, right below me here, if you're watching, uh, we have Captain Tarkin, which is a Ken man of multiple names. Um, so you're going to learn a multitude of names listening to us and watching us <laughs> of all our platforms. <laughs> Ken will be known as a man of a thousand names. Hey, there's a, no, a new one. I need to be Admiral Tarkin. There we go. Yes. Admiral Tarkin. So Admiral. there we are. There we go. And, and there you go. 1001. Look at that. Yeah. See, he's a man of a thousand names. Uh, to my right here, we have a Nerd Cyclopedia OG and really one of the uh, creators of this channel. And also a great comic writer that we're going to get into some bonus footage towards the end of the uh, stream here and the end of the um, podcast here if you guys listen to. So uh, without a further ado, this is our guy here, D.P. Brown. Going and, last, on, peoples. and last but not least, we got our guy on the buttons, <laughs> another originator of Carbonite Bounty BS, and a Encyclopedia OG as well, our man Hitch. Thank you for the. He's a DJ at a group. <clears throat> Thank you for basically, the basic yeah. acknowledgement that I pressed the button. <laughs> no, he's, a, he's keeping it. He's keeping the stream good, making sure he's an official team. button presser. <laughs> yeah, he's the button guy. <laughs> you gotta have a button presser on a podcast. You know, everybody needs you one. Have a, everybody needs the button guy to make. But you sure get two up. button guys on one show. <laughs> that, that doesn't, doesn't work. work out. Man, no, no, you, gotta, no. you only have one button guy. Not a good idea at all. And one button, so it's always on or off. Right. <laughs> the guys unless, unless you're enjoying Star Wars, and you can have multiple. And we see what happens when you have multiple button pressers there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good one. Good one. Good one. Before we get going in this uh, last run here of season five, um, we're going to toss it to DP and let him let you guys know where to find us at. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you're going to our website where you will find all the links to the social media platforms that we are on at Nerdcyclopedia on Instagram, Twitter, and also on Facebook. Make sure that you, if you are watching us on YouTube, you're hitting that notification button. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Nerdcyclopedia.com also is a place where you can find all our videos, you know, to all our podcasts and everything. Um, also, send us some feedback we are do we have a facebook group carbonite bounty bs a star wars um you know group um we do accept like you know feedback on there we we get like a lot of memes we get like you know some good camaraderie with like you know our star wars fans and stuff just a really great community and we really thank you guys for being on the group and you know giving us that feedback and also finally nurse at nursecopedia.com make sure that you are leaving us physical feedback so we read the stuff and you know maybe even get some stuff on air for you um the sax guy (laughs) um oh oh, um apple podcast so make sure that you are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform apple podcast google play stitcher iHeartRadio, tune in anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast we are there thank you thank you dp and uh once again guys as we lead into this uh last run of episodes here um Mixed feelings, but uh, definitely it's still growing. The continuum of this series has been great, but uh, we'll just start out with Hitch here. What were your initial thoughts of this uh, last run here? I've been waiting for this sort of plot, this little arc of episodes to happen for a while. And not just because of, you know, what happens to Ahsoka, but because of what happens to Anakin here. This loss of his his apprentice in a very messed up way that really drives a wedge between him and the Jedi Council on top of being extremely stressful and pushing him to the edge of the dark side and questioning Adventurous. Um, Anakin took some real heavy duty Vader steps and the score really brought that. And, um, you know, I really appreciate this set of episodes for that reason. And of course the Ahsoka plot was so engaging. Wow. What a, what a, what a capper to season five. Right. What do you about DP? Yeah, I'm I'm right there with Hitch. I mean, this was a um I mean the episode the episodes before that was a great lead up to this and to see Ahsoka's fall and everything, it was just a sad thing to see the the council pretty much not have her back and everything. Um Anakin was pretty much the only one that had her had her back, but even he couldn't really, you know, stay stay on her side because it was just the evidence was just packing you know so much up against her that even he had to you know concede with like some doubts and stuff and like hitch was saying 
um, to to this 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 is his girl, you know. This is his Padawan and everything, you know. They had you you go back to when on um, um, when they first began and everything when they first met, you know. He wasn't really trying to you know have a Padawan. Now they're so tight to where he's going to step out on a limb and defend her to like the fullest and everything, you know, to try to get the evidence to to you know clear her name and stuff. So it was like, like he said, him taking that big step towards like the dark side for real, for real. Um, I'm so I love, I'm loving the show, the way the show is showing that it's other people, it's the, it's their relationships that that that, that affect our, I guess, our hero. And how about you, uh, Admiral Tarkin? Loved it. Great, probably the best finale, season finale so far. Um, Admiral Tarkin, I mean, come on. He's now he's now running the Jedi Council. He's now telling Yoda what to do. He's great. He, it's a he's, he's a great he's a great strategian strategist, uh, great military mind. He's got everybody eating out of the palm of his hand, and he's a human. Uh, I like Asuka's uh, being judged by the tribunal, the Jedi tribunal. Had a um, reminded me of the. Uh, uh, scene in uh, Superman when uh, you know General Zod yeah. was on trial. Yeah, yeah. had this <laughs> real, like you know with their big heads up there in the wall and he's <laughs> with a spotlight on him. I mean, it had this real like classic science fiction trial um, feel to it. Um, all the all, you're you're our last hope, Obi Wan. You're my only hope. I mean, we're getting the the stuff I love out of this now like they're, they're i can see it all building up and uh, i would i actually watched these last five or five or six episodes over and over and over again because they it did really remind me of the classic star wars vibe they really started to put the they started to pander a little bit more with all the lines you know the your only hope and um i've got a bad feeling about this and all these classic sort of uh, star wars um uh, idioms, I guess you call them, and act, and I don't know, just just the verbiage and everything, and the music building up with the Imperial March. Oh, Kid in the candy shop, take my money. Come on, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, and I echo what everybody else said as well. Um, it was kind of weird though, as far as you know, their thoughts, as you guys see some of the political genre genre in this. That uh, you know, when they made the trial decision, they said they were split 50 50, but. It seemed that the pressure from, you know, just as we deal in current life, you know, the pressure from the Senate, which would be the government, had them basically throw somebody, you know, and it's very similar to the story of John Walker. You know, it's, you know, military man that everything was asked of him and was thrown by the government, which in this case would be the Jedi Council, because of an all powerful more government that's, you know, they couldn't they couldn't defend her. I mean, yeah, you know, they've said it during the trial. They wanted to believe her. They probably did believe her. But based on the pressure they were getting from the Senate and from the plan of Coruscant, she was a sacrificial lamb. So a little upsetting, but uh, the political, you know, kind of backstory to that, to current life and even previous life for people serving in our armed services um, really was kind of unique. So I, I liked it. But, you know, from a Jedi perspective, like uh, we discussed this off kind of air, I just thought that they would be a little more aware and they've spoken about being clouded as far as their judgment, but being senior Jedi council, I figured that they would be a little more you know, astute in their ways. So still a great thing. I think my favorite part of it was, I don't know if you guys noticed it, the temple guards, like their, their costuming, like the kind of shallow monk look with the masks and their sabers. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's sick to me. Like that was my favorite part. Seeing the temple guards and they ignited their sabers, their <laughs> staff sabers. That, that was it for me. I, I love the temple guards and the way they kind of, I never really seen them animated like that, so they look really cool. The the Templar Knights, like the um, uh, that's what they reminded me of. They could have had the yeah. Crusades, you know, with the big mm -hmm. red cross down the middle. And, yeah. Uh, what, what the heck were they called? What were the the real ones? Uh, there was actually a, a series on uh, A and E or one of those shows that, that talked about the night the uh, the nightfall or something. But they talked about the Knights of the Templar and how they were just driven by the Catholic Church to go and. Uh, destroy anything that didn't believe in what the catholic church said they had that same sort of yeah and, and look to them i love the mask i love i love that the you know when you, when you sort of notice them they're standing in that room of judgment and those guys they look like statues and they all start moving around i mean it's just a neat it's just a neat look i really appreciated the art direction in this episode so much and not just one sort of scientific tropey trial multiple ones we have we have the jedi trial 
um, with the sort yeah. of where you know where she's like up on the pedestal. That's one. That's a real tropey one. I really enjoyed the black and white screen that they had up mm-hmm. during the formal Senate trial. That was a detail that spoke that spoke to a real deep part of me as because it's just echoes the portrayal of like dystopias that you yeah. see even like um <clears throat> this is a real a real goch uh, example but that apple 1984 ad oh where... yeah 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 reminded I... me of that uh and, and all the stilted camera angles and it just seemed like something that was like you know this is for this has been the same room and the same equipment they've done this in and for 50,000 years you know it had that sort of uh unspoken uh depth to it man what a what a cool little detail that that they just got really really right very very nice the attention to detail i mean throughout this back half i mean i mean you can't really discount that from you know um you know palpatine doing his thing and everything all the way up to you know what you were talking about <clears throat> um it really presented this is this is like a it was like a movie you were actually watching like a movie these last few maybe like five or six episodes you know it could have been like it is this could have really been up on the big screen i think it would have satisfied a lot of folks you know um, even if it's animated, the animation was just, you know, superb. If it was, if it was actually put together as a movie without like the, you know, Star Wars theme at the end, because so much, sometimes the theme at the end throws, throws it off. You know, it's just like the, the episode ends on a mood and then all of a sudden you got the happy Star Wars theme comes in at the end, <laughs> you know, but that last episode, it didn't do that. Did you guys yeah. catch that? That was yeah. nice. I like that. Yeah. When when they actually recognize themselves, okay, we don't have to, we, we recognize the story that we're telling and the mood that we're creating. So to end it off with a happy, well, with an upbeat tempo, you know, and, and sound just goes a long way in these shows and everything. Um, To, to end it off in that, in the, it just it presented like the gloom and sense and what we've been talking about like this whole season and this whole series the coming of the darks you know the the darkness that's just the fall of the republic and everything um ahsoka's um well you know we talked about it you know offline um the her her um what i want to say here her way of the, the the way the jedi council just sort of just didn't have her back was just a little bit disappointing. I don't know if that had to do with the writing. Um, I don't know if it was just too quick where she all of a sudden was on a run, you know, she did one thing and then all of a sudden, you know, she had to, to go. I mean, she, 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 you, we see, we see this character do so much, you know, good throughout the whole series and build us so much credibility to all of a sudden just have one thing happen to her. And all of a sudden, you know, she's on the run and none of the Jedi Council can even speak to like her integrity and everything. That was just a little disappointing, except for Anakin. It was tropey, but it's still a little bit that would that would have been probably my only nitpick as far as, um, you know, everything that happened in the back half of the episode. Well, well, isn't that the plan, though? Isn't that the plan? Like the Jedi have to fall. The, they have to be looked at by the public as murderers as Mm -hmm. criminals so this is how it starts and they take a and so this perfect example just what you said dp she's all heroic efforts all through the series i mean but what do people remember the one thing you did wrong nobody remembers the thousand things you did right Right. one thing wrong and that's the thing that's going to seed this downfall and expulsion of the jedi from society from all authority and this is the beginning of it. Maybe I have too much faith in in in, in <laughs> maybe you you know humanity or whatever that that they'll be able to 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 find something in their hearts. But I mean, I guess deep down, it's really showing us that people are weak and succumb and succumb to to institutions, to um to rules, to a certain way to protect themselves or what they feel the safest route to go. They really put Ahsoka out there, you know. They hung, her out dry. They, they hung her out to dry. Yeah. Anakin mm-hmm. was the only one. And it's just, just going to be so frustrating when I watch um, Revenge of the Sith and see his downfall. That's just, just, just not right. But it's so, it's well, what is what it is. Is it a downfall? Is it really a downfall or is it that that's his, that's his path. And that's, he's, that's his path. Okay. Yep. I can, I can, I can appreciate that. Because that, that set the stage for 
six really great blockbuster movies you know <laughs> the gdp you of take, northern california was like doubled mostly yeah, because take, because of this yeah exactly i mean this is this is this is what it is this is the story so the this father the story yeah. as the father falls the son mm -hmm. grows up yeah. abiding his way and then the son redeems the father so this is supposed to happen this is the way this is the way it is. I can't wait. This is like the big moment. I mean, I love evil, dark. <laughs> it's, it's just so fire. Palpatine wins here no matter what happens, no matter who. Yep. You know, he needs a Jedi to be found guilty of this if Ahsoka goes down great. If they can if he can prove there was some sort of cover up or that there is a seditious Jedi, the one he goes to sell the galaxy on all the Jedi are seditious, except for one. One glorious beautiful jedi who was not in any way seditious uh that they'll believe it and it's a necessary first step of putting the libel on the jedi the jedi started the clone wars the jedi are responsible for this that's why we had to you know have the army of the republic bring them all to heel it all makes sense as as the beginning of palpatine's turn against the jedi instead of using them to prosecute the war now he's <clears throat> blaming them for the war right so he's he's gonna prosper no matter what happens here, and it, and it's just it's just interesting to see them that this is like where this is like that 1863 moment you know what I mean this is the heel turn on the whole thing the fulcrum the war turns on is Ahsoka being kicked out of the Jedi Order because now Anakin doesn't trust the Jedi Council. Yep. Now yep. Anakin knows they were wrong. Anakin feels he you know he agrees with us. Anakin agrees with us, and he's still a part of this organization. And if he stays, he's going to try to change it from the inside. And that means getting put on the council and all of this, these actions then to keep him off the council in episode three are now tinged with this, you know, sort of this, this echo of what happened to Ahsoka, how they're now doing to him, you know, what, what they did to her. And it's fascinating to see Palpatine have this all set up now at this, at this turning point in the war. Um, where the Jedi are now going to be viewed by the public as, you know, a menace and not, not so much as a boon. And that's, that's a big change. That's the thing that changes the most in the, in the Republic. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, and, and for me to be as, um, upset, um, <laughs> kid is, 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 oh, is, don't, is don't cry. Well, well, it's, it goes to the, it goes to show you how much, you know, I'm invested in this. You know, mm. I'm I'm like, you know, I can easily sit back and just be like, oh, you know, this is some trophy crap or whatever. But no, I'm like, OK, this is this is getting me upset. You know, <laughs> I don't like where this is heading, even though I know where it's heading. <laughs> you well, know, the, the whole story is emotional. We're supposed to yeah. be caught up That's, in it. Yeah, we're supposed yeah. to have we're That's supposed to have of a good story. Yeah, we're supposed to, you know, have a side like there's people that uh, support the rebellion. Yeah. They're, you know, the rebels, but then there's people that support the, the, uh, the government that's in power, the galactic empire. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's both sides and we can discuss it and it's emotional. That's, that's, what's genius about this whole story is it, it is that way. I see it now, Ken, I see it. You know, it, there's, an in, yeah. there's an interesting what if, so, you know, what if during this process, and I thought about this as the episode season ended, I mean, why wouldn't Palpatine scrape up Ahsoka? And try to turn her at this point because you could you imagine how powerful she would be as a sith i mean well we we don't know the, her entrance in mandalorian she was pretty sithy i mean she seemed pretty dark uh you know she seemed like she'd been through a lot maybe there's yeah. a moment where he worked on her you know well you'll see um i don't want to go too far into it but you'll see her path i mean as we go through this and into other mediums whether it be rebels she's um She's still around, but her character definitely changes into um, somebody that's more neutral, I'll say. You know, she's not really a light or the dark side. She's more of a like the Qui-Gon character that the Jedi Council didn't like. I mean, and we talked about it. There, There is a reason why Qui-Gon was really the outspoken Jedi as Obi-Wan wanted to become. And, you know, Anakin kind of was. And to me, uh, Anakin was just more honestly as, as he's at his ascent, I guess, as a Jedi now before he switches to the dark side. I kind of get that Qui-Gon vibe out of him. That he didn't even be trained under him or learn from him, but that whole, not really stubbornness, but the ability to use reason and, and you know, real real life scenarios as far as 
being able to differentiate what's right and wrong other than what the council thinks is something that I think was very anti, you know, Jedi. And that's what caused him not to get a council seat. They, they I, sense that in him. There were a couple, a couple faces he made that were just like, like he made a face at the guard in that, in that, uh, that guard clone. Yeah. He's like, you'll be, it's like, Oh, you'll be sorry about this. And it was like, Oh shit. Like you should be really like really terrified of that guy. And then he did it again here at the end. Uh, you know, uh, adventurous. He said, "Or all it'll be." What does he say? Or you'll be dead, or something like that. He like, really yeah. directly threatens her, and she says, "Is that a promise?" Oh, what a great, what a great scene between him and adventurous. I, I, I really, really enjoyed her making light of that threat. But man, he's getting, <clears throat> he's getting menacing. <laughs> well, how, how about that threat on the, uh, the, um, the the guy's wife when they like cornered her? I was like, he was pretty aggressive. Mm-hmm. And he was like screaming at her. I was like, that's like, you know, that was that first kind of like dark side kind of, I thought they were going to play a little bit of like theme music to that. But yeah, I mean, the anger and aggression there was pretty serious, even from Ahsoka yeah, and, as well. And all the art now. Yeah, like yeah. exactly. All the art, he's all, um, I think it's, uh, they do uplighting, you know, for, mm-hmm. for evil. You know, they want to show like all the cheekbone shadows and it makes you look real like uh, dark and your eyes are sunk in. They're really doing that really well. And, Anakin at the end of episode three, I mean, just standing on the lot. Well, okay, I'm not going to get into that. He's like standing on the lava and he's, he's yelling at Obi-Wan, you know, and um, it, it, that, that darkness is there. It's, it's, and it's coming through in the cartoon too. That um, desperation, man. I get, I get the, the, the thing from Ahsoka is that this is a woman with integrity, you know, this is a woman. Well, OK, I, I guess integrity is a, is a different type of word, but just a woman with with or or a, um, a Jedi with purpose. purpose, but just something more than she 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 by, her, by the what she feels is really the betrayal of, you know, the Jedi count, you know, Jedi Council, you know, something that she trusted for so long um is is based while I'm, I'm looking at it as well so when they accept her back why should she stay they could turn around and do anything to her at any minute you know um and and and, and they didn't have the they basically just did not have her back you know so why should she stay on with them you know anakin was it was really the only person that she could be loyal to but he's you know he's jedi and everything and she feels that she's this is not this is not something that she wants to be a part of her. I thought it was real powerful the way that she just walked away, you know, um, at the end there, because, you know, we we've 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 had her around for so long and everything connected to like the council and like doing basically anything they said with with no hesitation, you know, sure. She questioned some things, you know, she questioned many things and stuff, but she was still a loyal soldier, you know. And it comes to a point where the soldier sees like the whole, you know, the the the, the government you've been working for, you know, is not as is not what you thought it was, you know. And then, um, you know, we we get that that walk off at the end and everything. And I'm excited to see. I don't. I, I wouldn't get the impression that Palpatine eventually works on her. I think, you know, if if Palpatine was to come to her, that that just is a non-starter for you know Ahsoka. She wouldn't even entertain the you know, concept of even listening to him, you know, no matter his manipulative, she will see through his stuff. Mm, I don't know about that. I mean, we've seen him tame the, you know, I, arguably mm, mm. the greatest, well, the greatest it's, it's Jedi all... of all time. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> arguably, we'll say, we'll use those words, you know. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, that it's, it's not like he's, it's not like he had, he didn't retire and defeated here, guys. Let's, let's be clear about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like, I mean, before, before we say anything else, I, mean, I, I get you that he had a great long run as champion for sure. Right. Like Lennox the Lewis, the Miami 72 right. Dolphins, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, but eventually, I mean, he didn't end, he didn't end his career, you know, uh, with, with, with the finals championship. Right. He didn't walk away at the right time. So, so, you know, I don't know that you could say greatest ever. Uh, that's a, that's a tough one, but definitely one of, definitely the greatest, the closest the Sith ever came, I think probably to eliminating the Jedi. And, um, man, he brought, he was bringing the wielding the power of the state. And, and 
I really enjoy the way they portray how the new Repu the Republic army is, this grand army of the Republic. Uh, how it's sort of taking over Coruscant and how there's these giant clone statues everywhere and these new insignias everywhere. And it's almost like, you know, it, this stuff is really taking the place of the Jedi all the way. Like there is nothing, there's less and less and less being left to the Jedi. And the Jedi's shooting themselves in the foot. Ah, come on. <laughs> you know, um, that's just, it's just, it's crazy to me. I mean, just, you know, help your peoples and stuff, you know. Um, have their backs and stuff, show some integrity, but slowly the Jedi have been losing credibility all this time, you know, and that's that, if anything, that just leads to their fall even that much more. Yeah, and exactly, that's, Tarkin is now seeing how the Jedi is a failed investment. Their, their, their spark, their power, their religion has gone, gone out of the galaxy, and he tells he tells Vader that multiple times, you know, your devotion to that sad religion is a waste of time. And he's seen it. He's seen it up close and personal, how it just doesn't have a place anymore. There needs to be a new, a new government, a new way of, 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 of rule. And it has to be with a fist. And I think, I think Palpatine's loving this. I mean, like, like Kitch says, he's playing both sides of the card. He's like, this, he, this is exactly what I want to happen. This is perfect. I've got the right people with the right voice, and it's the right time. And and with Ahsoka going on trial and getting convicted, that 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 really just puts the puts the first nail in the coffin for the Jedi. And this is such a it's such a misdirection too, right? Because you get very much. This is exactly how. Umbar, the uh, Umbara series starts, right? Anakin gets called back to the temple. Yep. And and you think to yourself, okay, so what are we going to see? It's it's a, it's a completely different and switcheroo in the genre. You think you're going to see this slog, this fight, and instead you get an investigation and you get like multiple inter you get a lot of different stuff here and the culmination of an emotional story arc. And it's and Ahsoka leaves the Jedi wrong-footed. How often does that happen where the Jedi order ends up looking like, like they're the bad guys. And maybe it's never happened in the living memory of anybody that that's alive, even Yoda, but they messed up. Mm -hmm. Wild stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, all it takes is, you know, for people to see a flaw and like um, Kim was saying, I mean, they don't remember all the good stuff. They remember the flaw, which is a failure of, you know, I guess, you know, the person and everything, you know, um, they remember the flaw and then things just start to unravel, you know? Yep. So then people start looking at things with a magnifying glass and mm -hmm. say, oh, this failed. Oh, look, there's another one. There's yep. another one. There's yep. another one. Pretty yep. soon they look at change. all these justices and these, uh, these, these moments where the Jedi overstepped, like they overstepped their, their bounds and right. now it all starts coming about and unraveling and it all makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you guys picked on uh, up on it, but uh, this was the first time during the trial that even Mace Windu, who's basically like the, the hard ass of the Jedi, mm. was reluctant to make a decision. He didn't want to make that decision. He didn't want to expel her at all, which really was unique to me because typically he's the guy who is, you know, by the book and this is the way we're going to do it. So uh, that character kind of arc that he had during that little short period made me kind of raise my eyebrows as far as how he viewed her. And he There's basically knew she was innocent. Yeah, and there's always one that denies. There's always one person in in a group that's going to say, uh, "I don't see any. I'm not getting involved. I'm not doing it. I don't want my. I don't want blood on my hands." There's always one person that denies there's anything wrong. Sits, you know, puts the decision off on somebody else. Uh, there's all. There's always one, and that's that's very that's important. There has to be that person with it within a group that plays that role. It is weird that it was Mace because you think Mace is a pretty He's a tough guy, you know, he sticks to his guns. He's got a purple goddamn lightsaber. I mean, <laughs> on. that's, that's, that be enough. that's, yeah, that should be enough. He should just be able to miss what I said. <laughs> He's but so he, tough. He they had to find Samuel L. Jackson to play him. Like, that's it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I mean, no, no other, I mean, you know. Samuel L. Jackson was actually born to play basically. <laughs> His parents. That, parent, was, his, that parent, was his path. 
That was his path. That's right. <laughs> his Born trial. Winded. His the, trial. The, 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 the story that um, they created a purple lightsaber for him to me is so shocking. Like the fact that they never had purple until he asked for it, and George Lucas was like, "Oh yeah, whatever you want." You know. Oh that, wow. that, 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 You didn't know that? Yeah. That's yeah. The story. That, yeah. The, that, purple was never a color. He went to George Lucas. Was like, "I want to have a purple one," and George is like, "Yeah, sure." I'm like, "Dude, you have all this credit in the bank." This is your series. How's an A-list actor going to come in and just be like, I want this, and you're just going to abandon him? Because his name, middle name begin with an L. That's all you really need right there. So, I But um, I guess with that, we'll go to a break, and we'll be right back. Two and two. Now, if you love blood, gore, and violence, please watch Invincible. Were you disappointed by Mortal Kombat blood and violence? you enjoy blood and violence as a cartoon well come check out this cartoon on amazon amazon just got some really good stuff as far as this show you got omni man you got the fake teen titans you got the fake justice league man what more could you want come watch us on the nerd psycho comic flick show overall um great season great season you don't run this show what are you doing? First of all, no, yeah. that's not how this works. When we when we establish a hierarchy on this show and we start differentiating into roles, and I, I hold the button, I'm the button guy, so I'll say yeah, button I'll pusher. You will push the button when we tell you to. That's not how this works on this show. You know we need to get him a big red button. We need to get him. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. What? He just says guilty all the time. Guilty. What? Judge Judy. Oh, are we going to nerd court? Is yeah. Happening for serious now. Nerd court. Nerd court. You're gonna go get your left field pass revoked. Ooh. Me, me and DP are already in nerd court. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's a tease. That's a tease, guys. That's a yeah. tease. Yeah. So all you fans out there watching and listening to us, um, yeah. Nerdcore, that might be a pretty fun, you know, a pretty fun side spinoff we can think about doing. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, and, it's me happening. And, me and DP have some um, some unrelated, uh, we'll call it Marvel beef, but we need to get off our chest in court. So that'll be that'll be a fun thing that you guys hopefully uh, end up seeing on camera and listening to because I think it'll be pretty fun, pretty fun. But uh, just to bring us back into Star Wars, obviously, guys. Um, as we discussed, a great run of episodes here. Um, Leading into season six, which um, these final two seasons aren't too long. So as we previously discussed kind of um, off camera and even, uh, you know, kind of coming up with the ideas for this, uh, we're going to just cut them both into two parts. So we're going to lead uh, season six, which was actually done in 2014 from out. Uh, uh, we'll start with part one and do a part two. So we'll go one to seven and then eight to uh, I believe it was eight to 13. So. Wait a minute. So that was 2014. So when did didn't season seven come out last year? Correct. Yeah, they, there was a they six waited, year gap. Yeah, they waited like five years to put that one out. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Well, they, were working. they wanted to tweak it. They did. <laughs> they spent like a year on each season. <laughs> each episode. And they were like oh, each, each episode. They had to get the motion capture right. Everything. <laughs> The, they worked with the actors, you know, facial uh, expressions. And, yeah. you know. Understandable. Right. Hey, you know, if it, if this was if if season seven is was, is remarkable as season five, and I'm have a feeling season six is just going to be just as good, you know, with the fallout. Um, I'm 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 digging it. I can't wait. And like I said, just looking forward to seeing Revenge of the Sith again. You know, because my mind is just I don't remember anything from that movie anything except for the babies being born the twins yeah and darth vader <laughs> yeah i can't wait we i can't wait to, to do that we gotta let's just get through these let's get through six and seven so much right the anticipation is building guys but um yeah you know as as we discussed here before we get off here we have a little special bonus feature i wanted to give um dp some time to discuss something he's working on it's near and dear to him and i've actually kind of previewed it previously before it's went public and i really liked it so dp before we uh, get off here i just want to give you the floor and and go ahead and let everybody know I made a comic book guys thank you thank you thank you thank you um, it's called The Theme of Thieves. Um, the first issue right now is on Kickstarter. 
Um, it's a time travel and mystery, mystery series. So if you guys like, you know, time travel mixed with your mystery, then, I mean, this is this is the book series for you. Um, it's about three people who um, time travel to solve a mystery of why people are disappearing in present day. So think quantum leap, think loss, you know, meets the wire. This is everything all jumbled up right into one. So it's a it's a beautiful thing. And um, we, we got the Kickstarter kicking off today and, you know, had a really good day. So we got about like 31 days left, you know, in the Kickstarter. So you still got time to do your pledges. Um, we got some really great stuff, you know, um, T-shirt merchandise, of course, variant covers. Um, even got some artwork by the featured artist, Dan Ekes. You know, he um, he did the artwork and Alex Zeif, you know, she did the colors. Um, Marco um, Della Verde did the um, lettering. You know, I just got a whole team of good representation you know, um, for this comic. So definitely go on um, the Kickstarter report. The support is called the theme of thieves. We'll put a link in the com in the, um, in the description so you can check it out. I appreciate that guys. And, you know, from uh, him to me as well. I mean, like I said, I read some of the beginnings of it and really gripped me and I really liked it. So it's my first time really reading an independent comic. I was actually shocked at the animation and, and the thought he put into it. So like I said, you know, not just trying to pull his coattails, but it's something that I would even read because it's, it's really interesting. Those first couple, um, you know, episodes even got to me. So when I was starting to read that, I was like, oh, wow, this is where he's taking it. Um, so, yeah, I, I just wanted to echo that, Sam. I really appreciate your work. And, yeah, everybody, please go out and support and so we can keep this project going for him. I know it's something that's near and dear to him. Thank you. But before we go, guys, we'll just wrap it up here. Uh, we'll start with you, Ken. Um, what are you looking forward to in the season six here before we uh, get off for everybody? More Admiral Tarkin. You know, I uh, just want to see more of him and how he's going to create his his army, his imperial army out of the riffraff of the clones. He's got to find. Uh, and I still think the Bad Batch is going to roll up in here somewhere. Uh, you know, I mean, I think they're going to be part of this uh, somehow. But looking forward to that, looking forward to seeing more of the, the downfall of the Jedi, looking forward to seeing Anakin continue his his pilgrimage to, to <laughs> what will be not, not descent uh, his his path and pilgrimage <laughs> his his ascent his descent into hell <laughs> his descent into w multiple layers of Dante's Inferno just <laughs> all the way down handshake to to Satan basically so I'm looking forward to that Obi Wan how does he become a a, a hermit you know that there's got to be some of that there too so i mean if these last set of episodes are any any foreshadowing for what's to come man we're in for a wild ride can't wait what about you hitch you know anakin's really getting more and more isolated as time goes on here uh and and he takes shortcut after shortcut now he's he's lost ahsoka and he's experienced what that is and, you know, I want to see how that drives him moving forward. Like, what lengths is he now going to go to? Is he going to become more desperate? And I want to see the tide of the war change a little bit. You know, when we start episode three, obviously there's a desperate fight for the life of the Republic right at the beginning of that. And and so I want to see how the Separatists sort of come back and get the upper hand uh, on... Um, on the Republic. So I'm interested to see how the rest of this shakes out. Uh, man, what a great emotional ending to season five, just a real empire strikes back sort of feel to the end of this, you know, the Sith win, you know, the emperor wins, you know, more than once. And our heroes are isolated and alone. It's just, you know, maybe it's just, I like a sad story and that's why I like empire. And I like, um, you know, Avengers three, that's just sort of how yeah, I mean, it's wired. like Infinity War all over again, <laughs> except a little less dust. <laughs> just a little bit of dust in this in this set. Uh, but I'm looking forward to all all of that stuff. And if they want to throw a couple real epic, uh, a couple epic lightsaber showdowns and a couple epic you know space battles my way in season six, I wouldn't be upset. I just want to say I, I want to give the show so much props just for something small, but it shows you detail how much they pay attention to the detail when they ended the season off, how they did with that the credits. I'm I'm a credits guy, you know. If you do your credits, if you do the credits right and respect the credits, it can 
make and break your 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 show and everything. They 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 set the tone and they just let it just sit there and just let you just your draw drop and you're and and I don't know how far the 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 season five to season six was, but to have to wait, you know, for that next season, you know, after that, you know, the jaw dropper, I mean, it's it, you can't really beat it. You know, we we talk. Uh, I, I know we're trying to get off the air here, but you know, we talk a lot about how, like, you know, George Lucas had this plan, this grand vision. And he made episode three in 2005, but the, uh, that movie that he made was the movie that w- we're going to see at the end of this cycle, right? That already had in his head all of this, you know, scaffolding built yeah. and it was ready to have all of the story thrown up to see it. And in that context, I could already tell it's better. We've talked about how, you know, I think t took something away from episode nine. <laughs> I gave it to episode three on my scale. So we achieved balance. Uh, but man, just like you said, DP, really such appreciation for the depth that it's even adding to uh, media that was already released, you know, 10 years before the new stuff. So crazy. Awesome. And I echo that as well, guys. I just feel like, you know, seeing this and as we get in episode three, like like I said, my appreciation for it is, is really changed. Um, really going into just with, going into with another with basically a, a blank slate and an open mind. I mean, we we. Most of us know the ending and how it goes, but just watching this kind of piece the puzzle together and then seeing everything kind of lay out in our eyes on a future film, uh, I'm I'm just like Ken. I'm just as excited to see it again and, and review that and and move forward as far as where we go from there because there's so much exciting media out here and this series really kind of you know didn't really bring my love back, but it just it just goes to show how much how deep stars can be for somebody even like you. Uh, DP, it's more of a neutral. I mean, I, I'm starting to think before we get to this last seven, eight, nine, that we're going to just basically call you a Star Wars fan. So you're coming. We're, we're getting there. you there. We're getting you close. I'm, Are you I'm, I'm, I'm officially there. there? So you're um, no longer the neutral? It's nah, official? Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still getting into it. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm there with this. I can tell you that Clone Wars sold me. You know, I might, like I said, change my mind on seven, eight, nine when we get there, but we'll see. You, you would be the only probably the only person to do 32 episodes of a star Wars podcast and then be like, you know what? Not a fan. Just be you. Yeah. Never going to watch it again. Nah. You know nah. what? Thought about a pass on the rest of this. I'm out. Star what? No. I'm oh out. man. Not a fan. Not a fan. So the, so the star Wars podcast reten- fan retention rate, no longer 100%. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Carbonite Bounty VS and their encyclopedia. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, guys, like I said once again, we thank everybody for listening to us. And then until next week, when we start season six, uh, one to seven, guys, this is uh, me and America, and this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Nerdcyclopedia.